Okay, good afternoon. Um, this talk is going to take us in a slightly different direction. It's going to focus on individuals, on people, on older Israelis. Uh, and uh, looking specifically at the question, are older Israelis worried about their money, and if so, why? Um, and here we go. Today, individuals are expected to take greater responsibility for the acquisition and maintenance uh, of retirement resources. Okay. Um, uh, to make decisions about managing their money, to preserve a balance between assets and expenditures in a time of increasing longevity. However, the growing demand for personal fiscal liability comes at a time of economic complexity and an increasingly risky and globalized marketplace. Many people lack the financial literacy needed to negotiate the vicissitudes of unpredictable financial markets. Thus, the financing of a good old age is a difficult task under the best of circumstances. Given this contemporary dilemma, we sought to clarify the extent to which older people are concerned about their financial futures and to identify what is it that most drives their fiscal worries. What's a worry? Worry has been defined as a set of uncontrollable negative thoughts or images. The process of worrying may elicit problem solving. It might be good for us but it's also associated with negative outcomes. Interestingly, older people worry less than younger people, despite the many challenges that can arise in late life. Financial worries in late life are related to several spheres, including lifestyle, social network, functional health, long-term care needs, and cognition. We'll review them each one by one. Western society promotes the maintenance of an active lifestyle after retirement as a means to successful aging. The successful aging paradigm said, be active, be involved, and you will be well. Although related to well-being, social engagement also costs considerable amount of expenses. Thus, the need to finance an active third age might increase financial concerns. Social network refers to the relationships and the supports that people maintain throughout the life course. Members of one's social network can buffer stress in times of crisis or obviate the need for formal support through the direct provision of assistance. Following this, it might be deduced that social network support can reduce concerns about one's economic state. So we might hypothesize an inverse relationship between social support and financial worries. Financial worries might also be related to health. The literature suggests that financial worries make various aspects of poor health status worse, but it might work the other way as well. Having poor functional health might increase financial worries because health problems raise concerns about the costs of disability. Formal help can overcome functional limitations, that's true, but it also adds on additional expenses and may engender additional financial worry. Home-delivered or facility-based care for oneself or one's partner entails great expenses over an extended period. We just heard that many of those are covered by the national social insurance, but they don't cover them all. Lack of insurance coverage or personal savings to cover future long-term care costs can heighten financial worries. Finally, financial concerns may be related to cognitive status. Financial planning and management are complex tasks. For individuals with cognitive decline, the requirements of financial management can indeed become worrisome. Now, data from the Israeli component of SHARE, the Survey of Health, Aging, and Retirement in Europe, revealed that back in 2005-2006, some 61% of Israelis aged 50 and over expressed some degree of perceived financial difficulty. Even after controlling for background health and other variables, older Israelis were much more likely than their counterparts in Europe, except for Greece and Italy, to have perceived difficulty making ends meet. Yet another study showed that older Israelis forewent medical care at least twice as often as was reported in Europe, most usually dental care and medication. It seems, therefore, that there's ample basis for financial worry among many older Israelis. So, in order to address this question, we carried out a survey. It was done for the Ministry of Senior Citizens, financed by them. 
It was a, uh, a survey, a telephone survey in 2001 of a representative sample of 550 older adults, people aged 65 and older. Uh, Arab Israelis were oversampled and adults aged 80 and over were somewhat underrepresented, probably because they were a little more uh, hesitant to answer questions over the phone. So we therefore applied weights to the sample based upon the national distributions of gender, population group, and age group according to the Central Bureau of Statistics. How is uh, 2009, no? Hmm? 2011. 2011, I should have said, yes. I missed one of the ones. Okay. Done just last year, 2011. Okay. Um, the questionnaire included 66 questions. A key part was an inventory of 26 worries based upon the, the revised worry scale of older adults. Factor analysis yielded a unique construct, construct in the financial domain, which was comprised of five e economic worries. To what extent do you worry that you will not be able to buy newspapers, books, or cable subscriptions? You'll not be able to pay your housing utility bills. You will become financially dependent on someone else. You will not know how to manage your pension funds and your pension funds will not suffice for your entire life. Each question or each item was rated on a three-point answer scale, not worried at all, somewhat worried and very worried. The five items functioned well as a scale with an alpha Kronbach of 9.90. The mean scale score of financial worry served as the dependent variable. Those who didn't answer at least 80% of, the, of the, all five financial worry items 6% of the sample were excluded from the current analysis. Uh, background characteristics in our study included age, gender, population group, and whether respondents were born in the region that now constitutes the state of Israel. Religious observance was measured on an ordinal scale, secular, traditional, orthodox, and you've learned the Israeli term Haredi, which means ultra-orthodox. Perceived income adequacy was a probe asking how difficult it was to make ends meet in the previous month. The higher the score, the easier it was to manage financially. And finally, we looked at self-rated health. The higher the score, the better one's health status. We also looked at indicators of active lifestyle, social network, functional level, long-term care, and cognition. Active lifestyle was tapped on three dimensions, working or volunteering, the extent to which respondents wish to engage in more activities, and caring for a pet. I don't know why we put that in, but that's there too. Um, a social network was considered by the presence of spouse, the number of children, the proximity to children or grandchildren, and the measure of social support based upon a series of statements such as people wish to be close to you. Concerns about functional level were reflected in two specific items. I worry about being dependent on others, and I worry about needing the aid of an auxiliary device. Long-term care was addressed by worrying about not having a caregiver and worry about having to care for someone else. Finally, concerns related to cognition were measured on two probes, worry that the respondent will forget important things and worry that he or she will be unable to make decisions. In the analysis, we regressed the final worry score on the variables with significant bivariate associations Missing values on continuous independent variables were replaced by the means of the relevant variables. So, on to the results. Um, go back there. About one-third of the respondents had financial worries. Over 40% were worried about their pension savings running out. More than a third feared becoming dependent financially on someone else. And a third felt they would not be able to meet essential payments. Um, okay, um, I thought that would have showed that. Let me go back. Okay, um, some 28% believe their purchasing power would be at risk. On the whole, the sample respondents indicated a moderate degree of financial worry. Okay, that's just a sort of um, verbal summary. There wasn't a slide for that, so I confused you. Okay, um, but if we look at the demographics, there were fewer men than women in the weighted sample. Some one-third were native-born. The average age was 75, about 5% were ultra-orthodox, 10% orthodox, more than a quarter of the sample were traditional, and more than a half secular. Respondents were generally able to manage financially, but they saw their health as somewhat good only. A minority maintained active lifestyles, a third engaged in work or volunteering, less than a fifth cared for a pet, 
a moderate desire was expressed to increase the current level of activity. Social support was somewhat high. Almost two-thirds were married and had three children on average. Two-thirds had children or grandchildren living close by. Respondents were fairly worried about being functionally dependent on others in the future and somewhat less worried about a possible future need for auxiliary technical aids. Long-term care concerns were not widespread. Worries about cognition were a bit more prevalent. Now this graph shows the results of the multivariate analysis. It simply shows a figure of the beta coefficients uh, and the direction of their uh, association. The analysis revealed that those who saw their current financial situation as better were less inclined to be worried about future financial concerns, all else considered. Next in strength were long-term care concerns and cognition. Those who were worried about their own care or the care they might have to provide to others had more financial worries as well. The same was true for concerns about cognitive function. Those who were worried about making decisions expressed a greater degree of financial worry, as did, to a lesser extent, those who were concerned they would forget important things. Finally, the immigrants from the former Soviet Union after 1989, those who came in the massive wave after 1989, were less worried financially than the majority Jewish population. A negative association was also retained with age. Older respondents were less worried financially after taking into account everything else. So, how does this all come together? The inquiry found that a meaningful segment of older Israelis was worried financially. And the main financial worry was that your pension funds will not suffice for your entire life. This particular worry has been found elsewhere to be prevalent in younger ages. It's an important concern because it suggests that the financing of increased longevity is currently seen as a potentially stressful uh, matter. The study also showed that financial worries were associated with several factors. First, the greater the perceived ability to make ends meet, the less the financial worry. Thus, the future financial worries expressed by the respondents were rooted in their currently perceived economic state. The first applied conclusion of this study, therefore, is that a secure financial future in late life is challenged by an insecure financial present. Second, concerns about care are related to the extent of financial worry in old age. Older adults are influenced by two concurrent trends, some of which have been already discussed in previous papers. The continuing increase in longevity, which raises the possibility of future disability, and a decreasing reliance upon family-based informal care. A previous speaker said, it's great for us that we're freed from the extended family, but the fact is that most informal care is still given by extended family members, and particularly close family members. Taken together, these two factors explain the connection between care concerns and financial worry. Whether stemming from a perceived decrease in filial responsibility, a desire not to burden the children with caregiving responsibilities, or an objective lack of available family caregivers, informal helpers can no longer be counted upon to supply the increasing care needs of the older cohort. Given that formal care costs are not necessarily covered by insurance policies, older people need to cover some of these costs themselves, and this is apparently a major source of financial concern. Another correlate of financial worry was apprehension about making decisions. Anxiety over cognitive decline could drive financial worries. However, worry about forgetting important things had a weaker association with the financial worry outcome. We interpret this to mean that the apprehension about decision making may be more than just anxiety about decreasing cognitive function and that it might also reflect true concern about financial illiteracy in an increasingly complicated financial market. Not knowing how to manage one's limited funds makes for a worried financial future after retirement. Yet another point is the inverse relationship between age and financial worries. This is consistent with previous findings that the oldest old, those 75 years old and over, are less worried about finances than those aged 55 to 74. How do we explain that? Well, due to the accumulation of life experiences, 
psychological status becomes more stable with age, occurrence of negative emotions decreases, and people feel less threatened by an unknown future, and believe, to a lesser degree, in the usefulness of worrying. Following from this, it could be that financial concerns that people had in the beginning of their third age didn't change their financial status any, and this experience taught them the futility of worrying about financial matters. Another explanation could be that aging individuals expect to experience lower income and a future decrease in net worth, as well as a greater need for medical expenses. These conditions are not perceived to be under their control. Freed from the sense of responsibility and control over their financial future, they may worry less, whatever the expected outcome. A last point of note concerns the Russian Jews, those who came after 1989. We know objectively, and from the work of uh, Noach Levin Epstein specifically, that most recently uh, arrived older Russian immigrants are in a worse financial status than the majority population, and they have more precarious financial futures due to having almost no real assets, small pensions, and little savings in comparisons to others. And yet, they worry less. Why is that? The explanation might be that this particular generation of older Soviet Jews simply does not complain. The nature of the Soviet man, as uh, written about by Tamar Horowitz, the Soviet man that emerged from the Soviet regime included the trait of showing no feelings. Uh, two possible limitations should be noted in the particular study. The proportion of native-born older Israelis was somewhat higher than it is in the general population. Perhaps they felt more comfortable answering telephone survey. But the problem may be a minor one because native-born Israelis are generally better off financially than those who immigrated to Israel sometime during their lifetime. Thus, if there was an effect at all on this over-representation of the native-born, the Sabras, it was most likely in underestimating the extent of financial worries in the overall population rather than vice versa. A second limitation was the lack of personality measures in the analysis. We had a very limited budget, we had very limited time, we only were allowed to ask 66 questions, and so we chose what we could, and we didn't ask anything about personality constructs. But worrying may be a personality trait. The association between financial worries and worries in other domains might reflect an inclination rather than unique associations. This should be taken into account in future inquiry. So, in sum, this minor study shows light, some light, on financial worry among older adults. Older people will be increasingly expected to take responsibility for their own financial futures as governments reduce their involvement in providing social security for their aging populations, for good reason, as we've heard in the previous lectures. Therefore, understanding the different sources of financial worries and developing appropriate means for dealing with their negative outcomes are important for both programming and policy in an era of population aging. Thank you.